encouraged by his smile and and you and likewise you you need some encouragement when you are down and so uh, we we need to gather together that's why we are we are hurt animal any one of us ever think that if we are we can survive alone you are mistaken because that's where the devil will will divide and conquer you and eventually a lot of things will run through your mind so today I have uh, I'm here to prepare a message called preserve for a purpose the, this message came about because some uh, maybe uh, two years ago uh, during the pandemic I had a good friend a Christian brother who used to come and visit me every week and uh, he would try to he, he does direct selling supplement he tried to sell me supplement and so on but but he's a good brother he, do, he doesn't believe in taking medication he goes to gym every one week three times and so on and uh, and he comes and encourage me off and on but during pandemic there was a period of two months he was absent he absented himself from visiting me and then suddenly because of that I took a phone the phone and give him a call brother brother what happened to you I don't see you around and then he said brother I have stroke he's in the 50s he had half of his body got stroke and he, he was incapacitated he couldn't move now of course I being a, a good Christian and a brother I'm like Dr. Kwan by vocational I run a business and so on I try to encourage him off and on I would give a phone call to him but I have no answers for him because uh, sometimes things like this happen and I don't know how to explain why suddenly a person like him have stroke have a body stroke and the only thing I could tell the brother is brother I don't have answers yet for you but this I have I'm here for you whenever you need to somebody to pray to somebody to talk to I'm here for you and so in in in, in coming to church some of us got questions in our life and we don't have answers for everything but we need the one the smile of another brother the smile of another sister and say there is still hope in Jesus there is still hope in, in that so I want you all to this morning face your neighbor and say I see Jesus in you yeah amen because honestly that's why the Bible says we are living stones we encourage and build one another coming to church is the same thing I don't have all the answers in life I always tell people that the difference between the man standing on the pulpit and the one sitting in the chair is the man standing on the pulpit need God more than the person sitting in the chair he is not more holy he is not more uh, he is not spared from problems he have all the same challenges you have the only thing I've learned to go to God and ask God why and so in in asking God why such a thing happened to this man why do bad things happen to good people one morning five o'clock in the morning the Lord spoke to me about preserve for a purpose now I want to tell, tell you all uh, you are in church today you are preserved for a purpose some of you must have friends some of you must have friends that have gone during pandemic or during them and things days you don't understand and they have gone before you huh? and but you are still here you are not a mistake all right you are here because there is a purpose behind everything and so in searching for trying to find answers and this I could tell him that brother I sought the Lord the Lord told me you are preserved for a purpose although you have stroke although a brother is in the wheelchair I want to tell you you are preserved for a purpose God does not make uh, mistakes there is some reasons why God preserved every one of us I want to tell you the story of Rick Warren when he wrote the book purpose driven life I think many of you must have heard about this book <coughs> it was because his wife was suffering from cancer and and uh, during that moment as a pastor his wife suffering from cancer he was searching and the wife was searching for answers from God why 
you know why uh, uh, she had this problem and so on so in in her desperation and his desperation to seek answers from God the Bible tells us and you shall seek me and you will find me and you search for me with all your heart I will be found of you many of us try to look for God but we are not seeking for him seeking is more than just uh, uh, casually looking and, and so on seeking is really earnestly wanting answers wanting a touch of God wanting to make a difference in the, the God and make a difference in your life and so he sought the Lord and she sought the Lord uh, to cut the story short the wife died uh, she was not healed from the situation the wife died but they both of them discovered there was a greater purpose in it because of the challenges she went through she came very close to God they became to uh, they not only uh, uh, learn about God but they know God they know about the love of God and so he wrote this book called Purpose Driven Life and he sold 15 million copies of this book but God told him to donate all this into the kingdom but the, the main issue is that they, there is a greater purpose in everything we don't understand every situation in life but there is a greater purpose in it I'm standing here but I can tell you some of you I cannot see your eyes now because I also during pandemic had challenges with my eyes I I somebody people gave me honey inside got all the concussion that I drank religiously uh, and then eventually didn't know that it was a lot of sugar diabetic uh, I spike up in that affected my eyes now I can I can live uh, in depression and say why why this thing happened I did that you know I asked uh, God sorry, where do I point to okay okay sorry. so I, I asked God uh, uh, why all this thing I'm serving him I'm involved in several ministry I travel around the world I I've gone 40 over countries and I I can tell you that uh, I gave my life to God uh, to serve God but I have many reasons to ask God why such a thing happened to me again I sought the Lord in the morning I just now heard the brother saying Bible study I want to tell you all that you all must come to church and go for your Bible study the real reason is you are having a spiritual warfare yeah you cannot fight the devil uh, if you don't read the word of God Jesus always say as it is written when he was encountering a warfare with the devil he said as it is written he quote the Bible you and I must read the word of God because the Bible tells us the word of God tells us that the word of God is the sword of the spirit which is the word of God now if you don't read the word of God during your warfare with the devil you pull out your sword it's only two inch long how you expect to fight the devil with a two inch sword uh, you must be able to quote the scripture you must be able to tell what God has promised you what is your authority what is your identity in Christ Jesus but you cannot do that by just listening to Sunday messages you have to come to the uh, church do Bible study and so anyway I sidetracked a bit but but I want you all to spend time reading the Word of God. End time, this is very important because uh, there will be coming out all kind of doctrine, all kind of teaching uh, that will eventually lure you away from God. That you will use your human mind to rationalize many things. There are people who say, I don't need to go to church because I can see from the internet all the Bible teaching, why do I need to go to church? But you do not understand the Bible is in Hebrew do not forsake the assembling of the people he never said go and read from the internet or see uh, at home and you can you can nurture yourself God said do not forsake it is not just the reading of the Bible it's looking at one another face and building encouragement from from the life of one another so then again I woke up in the morning and I found talk to God about these challenges and so on it is okay to talk to God when you have questions and so on that's why the Bible says let us reason together God says let us reason together 
then I heard uh, in the morning God say, life is a gift, not a right. Don't fight for your right. You have already got the gift of life. Learn to value that gift of life that you have. When Job said this, you all can take my notes when uh, the, all the Bible verses are there. You can ask the church for the PowerPoint and you can go and study. But uh, Job says, naked I come, naked I go. You know, Our life uh, is given by God. We learn to appreciate. There is a, the Bible says there is a, pur- a time to born, a time to die. There is a purpose in everything. God has a purpose and He is a purpose for you to go. Uh, I, I promise you that you will die. And I will die. Uh, because the Bible says it's a counter that men will live once and die. Uh, and then stand before the judgment throne of God. You all will be standing before God. So I want to encourage you all this day. Realize that whatever you have is a gift of God. The Bible tells, to, many of us talk about uh, do everything we have uh, the right way, the divine help. Of course, I also believe in this. But do you know that Apostle Paul says that uh, he had a thorn in the flesh. In his subsequent epistles he wrote, I write in big letters. Theologians say that he has eye problem. That's why he write in big letters after that. Do you know that when Isaac was praying for the son Esau and Jacob, the Bible says that he had to touch his hand to feel the hair. What does it tell you? He had an eye problem. right? So as we all go old, older, our spare part will wear out. Uh, some of us will have some challenges. But learn, learn to realize to live with the, the thing. Because that's how the, uh, the three friends of Daniel say, even though God does not save me, yet will I serve him. That means even though I have this weakness, even though I have these challenges, even though I have two copper mines in my pocket, yet will I serve God. I don't serve God because many of us tell God, God, if you bless me this, I will serve you. I also did the same thing. Before I get involved in God, I say, God, you help me, I serve you. Then I heard God say, you serve me, I help you. You know, so we all lay terms and conditions. We tell God, you give me one uh, house, then I will I will give away my house. You, see, you have one house, you ask for another house, I call God. But finally, when you have two houses, you build three houses, you never, never give. Yeah. So it is never, it's, that's why the song, many of the songs that you all sang this morning, uh, if you search, it says, God search our hearts. Is it really search our heart? Is, is it, do you really want to give after you have two houses? God search. And you cannot even give when you have two copper mics. You know, so, so then you learn to appreciate what God says. Uh, that's why Job, who had everything, said, naked I come, naked I go. We realize that even though if God does not save me, but you and I know that God cares you for you too much that he will not leave you abandoned but he says the attitude was right the people say even though God does not save me yet will I serve him so even though whatever situation I have I will use whatever I can to serve God amen so it is important for you all to, to, to realize that life is a gift now I want to tell you that that in life, sometimes whatever setback you have, God is preparing you for a comeback. Now, the, if you look at the life of Joseph, okay, Joseph, God told him the stars were bowed down to him, the brothers were bowed down to him, but you know his whole journey, the brother made sure that he was not number one, he sold him as slave, he went to Potiphar's house, he was not number one, he was still number two, Potiphar was number one, you know, he did whatever is right, and then the wife of Potiphar tried to tempt him, and then accuse him, you know, and then he went into the prison, he was never number one, the prison warden was number one, he went out from prison, he went to the Pharaoh's court, he was not number one, he was still number two, uh, 
because he was the prime minister, but Bible says he served the purposes of God. Now, when you read through this this whole passage of the life of Joseph, you find in Genesis he says this. He tells the brother after he, the, your, many of you are mature Christian. I believe you all know the story. Eventually, he he had an encounter with the brothers and so on, and then. He told the brothers this, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. Whatever problem you have gotten, the devil tried to do in your life today, uh, God meant it for good. Eventually, he he quote the scripture, he quote to them that said, what you have done to me, to me, God has preserved me to save you. Uh, that means at the end of the day, Joseph's life was a comeback. God preserved him so that he could eventually save the father and the ch and the brothers because he was the prime minister. He could give them the ration ration for for the famine. He preserved. He called preserve him. So whatever problems you are going through and the challenges you are going through, uh, and you are still alive today, God has preserved you for a purpose because every setback you have is preparing you for a comeback. That is, this is the story of Joseph. All right. So remember this. Also, re, also, it will take too long if I quote all the scriptures. You go back and read. But whatever problem you are having and the challenges you are having is to cast light upon the darkness. I want to tell you that the Bible tells us that He comforts us. Uh, that we may be able to comfort others. Whatever challenges you are going through or difficulties uh, uh, you are going through, uh, you are a healing bump to somebody. You know, every wound that's afflicted in your life uh, is a healing bump for somebody. Whatever challenges you are going through, it is to not just meant for you, but meant for the people along your life. Imagine if you, you, you and I go to talk to a brother or sister who is a cancer patient, and you tell her or, or, or him, you say, I can understand how you feel. Bullshit, you will not understand how you feel. If you see a brother in a wheelchair and you tell the brother, I understand how you feel. Bullshit, you don't understand. You know? But if I am a cancer survivor, I tell the brother and the sister, I understand how you feel. That brother and that sister will draw strength from me because I have gone through the challenges. So whatever challenges you are going through, it's not meant for you, just for you to sit down and enjoy. And It's meant for somebody along the road, for you. That's why the testimony, the, the brother said that you all have meetings with sharing of testimony is not just meant for you. The experiences is not meant for you. It's meant for somebody along the road. That's why the Bible in Revelation says you overcame the devil with the blood of the Lamb and the testimony of the saints. Means you have gone through challenges, you have gone through experiences, you have met the Savior, you have an encounter with God. And that experience is to, for somebody down the road that needs you, that the experience and also, if today, during pandemic, I go through financial difficulties, yeah, but I turn around, the other brother says, I am also going through the same problem. Do you know sometimes you feel better? You always think that you are the only one who is suffering. Everybody is suffering. But... That's why the, the, the Psalm 23 says, Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, King David says, uh, He never said, I walk into the valley of shadow of death. He said, I walk through. You and I will go through challenges. There's nobody here that have no challenges. Yeah? Uh, we all uh, have challenges in our life. But that's why God tells us the beginning he tells us the end, but he never tells us the journey. The journey we have to hold his hand. Uh, and every step, uh, I like to my path. Uh, so 
God will show, reveal every time His presence, He was there. Huh? Only those who learn to appreciate will walk up. Oh, I survived the pandemic. Today, I'm a survivor. Because why? God was in me. I saw little miracles every day. I didn't see a big miracle happening one day, but I saw little miracle. I saw the faithfulness of God. I saw that God was with me through the time when I thought I would never survive. I could never pass through it, but today I survived. Then these are the people who realized that, hey, God was involved in your life. That's why he says the bird that flies in the air, you know, I feed them the lilies that grow by the wayside, I water them. Uh, the, bird, the bird never wake up and worry. He knows that uh, somehow or other God will provide. And so we, in the same manner, learn to know that we don't understand everything. I want to tell you that you don't have answers for everything in life. That's why the Bible tells us the judge shall live by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You know, most of us, if we have everything, we don't need God. We tell God, you don't disturb me, I don't disturb you. It's always because we have a need, we have a problem, we say, God, please, Lord, help me, Lord. I don't know what is ahead, but I entrust my life to you, Lord. You guide me, you teach me, Lord. You know, and so, remember that whatever challenges you are going through, you are casting light upon the darkness. Uh, your life is a testimony to, to somebody along the road. Now, I want also to, for, for you all to, to know that God sometimes preserves you for a purpose. God preserves Moses for a greater purpose, a destiny to fulfill. God preserved Jesus uh, in, in when they were born. Herod wanted to kill them, but God preserved them for preserved him for a purpose. Now I, I want to share with you also that sorry, uh, uh, that God God shield us so that we may fulfill our destiny. Uh, you we know about the life of Moses, how Mo Moses uh, eventually became a deliverer uh, because he was he was shielded and protected, preserved for a greater purpose. There is a greater purpose uh, in store for some of us here. Uh, that's why we all go through uh, challenges. We go through, yet we are, we survive because there is a greater purpose in it. Moses experienced the same thing. Jesus experienced. The same thing that he eventually had. Uh, that God wants you all to fulfill the destiny that he has for you. Uh, I want to tell you that your destiny is not coming to church and sit in your chair. Uh, your destiny is to make a difference in the life of somebody out there. Uh, in the life of your children, your children, children. Uh, some, your children will say, I want to be like my daddy. I want to be like my mommy. Because you are there to raise up, uh, to, to raise up. That's why the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy that you are raised to train and teach your children uh, so that they will fulfill their destiny uh, for them. They are learning from your life. And so it is important for you to know. No, nobody, everybody has a mission. As long as you are a Christian, you are a missionary. Right? Uh, the mission field is the work. The world is your mission field and you are a missionary out there to make the difference to your own family and so on. And, and so it is important that you are also preserved uh, for, to fulfill your destiny. Uh, you are also... Uh, uh, preserved to be an influencer or a game changer. Right? I want to tell you all that uh, if you look at the life of uh, Daniel, Daniel uh, was thrown into the lion's den. Daniel and his three friends were thrown into the 
fiery furnace. Uh, I mean, many of us don't understand when you read the Bible, if you read like a storybook, you know, Daniel was put into a lion's den, you, go, you don't understand the emotion and the struggle they have. Uh, maybe as they walk into the lion's den or even as they walk into the fiery furnace, uh, some of them will ask questions that you and I ask. What did I do wrong, God? That I need to go to the fiery furnace. Didn't I pray five times a day? Didn't I do what fast? The 40 days Daniel fast, you ask many questions. When Abraham and Sarah uh, were visited by the messenger and said that they will bring forth a child called Isaac, you know, the Bible tells us that 25 years later, when physically uh, their body was already considered dead, uh, but God spoke to them. You, you, can you just imagine if God spoke to you tomorrow and says, uh, tomorrow you'll be a rich man. Every day, right, every hour you may be praying when God use it, you know. But Abraham had to struggle 25 years later. So you just imag imagine the, the challenges, the struggle, the things that play on his mind, you know. That even at the end of the day, they were even, God understand them. God understand that even the challenges he went through, the questions they go through their mind, the wife decided uh, to take Hagar. Uh, God, the Bible tells us that he never, God never punished him. Uh, or they say, you terrible terror, you, you violated my, uh, you, he never uh, was patient to wait for the fulfillment. You, you did whatever on your own, but God never punished him. God understood he was human in that. But nevertheless, I'm just sharing with you the struggles that they went through. Uh, so Daniel had the same problem. Daniel's friends all had the same problem. There was a king, Nebuchadnezzar, who was, was uh, uh, rebellious against God, an uh, idol worshiper. Eventually, the Bible tells us that because of Daniel's and his three friends, fervency to God. They never gave up uh, in their call of God in their life. That eventually Nebuchadnezzar just said, worship the God of Daniel. Your life, my life is uh, uh, God. People, the world is looking at you. When you go through difficulty, the challenges, how do you carry yourself? How do you believe? Would you say, even though uh, God does not save me yet, I will serve you? You know, some of us come for prayer meetings. Uh, they come to church. Only 10 people come for prayer meetings. I, I don't want to come now. Also, only 10 people come. But I, 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 I don't know why I share this, but I want to tell you, if you come to church, you kneel down in the altar here, uh, don't ask your friend to come and kneel down and pray with you. I promise you, two weeks, three weeks later, somebody will kneel with you. By the time you know it, your pastor who don't kneel with you will also kneel with you. Because people are ashamed. They are ashamed because you know your God. You live by a set of conviction that God is real. You don't live by preference. You don't live by the, the uh, environment, the surrounding around you. People don't do, you don't do. People don't go for mission, you don't. People don't give, you don't give. You do it because you are convicted and convinced that God is real. That's how they, they behave. They were history breakers, they were influencers, they were game changers. They changed the whole situation around. They, they are the one that said, even though God doesn't save me yet, I will serve him. They didn't say, oh, yeah. everybody also never do the same thing. So, God sometimes preserves you and me as we go through challenges. Those way that you, when you go through challenges, reflect your faith in God. Two things God will ask you when you die and go to heaven. So, go to Pearly Gate. First thing, open your mouth. Why open your mouth? Because every doctor will tell you, 
open your mouth, they check whether you got infection or disease or not. Huh? They put out uh, your tongue, I will see whether you got infection or disease. Bible tells us in Matthew, he will judge you for every word that come out from your mouth. Uh, so God will judge you, but tongue will look at you. The next thing God will ask you to do is open your shirt. Why? You'll see how many scars you bear for him. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for there shall be the kingdom of God. We all go through challenges, uh, but how we react to the challenges, how we, we handle the challenges. Where are you? I trusted you and I've got so much problem. So God sometimes allows us to go through challenges so that we will go and become game changer or influencer to the people around us. Not always, uh, not always because there is suddenly the lame walk and the blind see. also from the life of Paul that says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. The life I now live, I live for the Son of Man who saved me. He had slashes, he was beaten, he was in prison, but he declared this word, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. I know the height, the depth, the width and the breadth of the love of God. You know, he says, I know all these things. He never said, where are you, God? But he knew that he had a God. Do we know our God? Do we sincerely believe in our God? When we are tested, this will be the thing. What oozes out from you uh, will tell you that your depth of your love with God. If, if what oozes out from you is not a fresh fragrance before the Lord, then you and I need to do something about it. You need, need to go back to your private chamber before God and ask God to change us. I say, God, I know I'm not there yet. Huh? You see, the, 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 the thing about God is God also has GPS. He's got God protection system and God positioning system. Uh, in God positioning system, the, the GPS, you always can turn back. Uh, the only thing is, if you keep in cemetery, then you say it's your final destination. But if you keep in for God, there is always a moment where you and I can return back to God. And so it's important for you to know this. Some of you are my age. Dr. Kwan is still very young. Uh, uh, I want to tell you, old age comes from God. Old age goes back to God. Right? I want to tell you that if God has preserved you at your, uh, your old age. Now, this message is not just meant for old people. God didn't preserve the young people. King David uh, knows this when he go. He say, "When I go to sleep, when I wake up in the morning, it is God who sustains me." So you come to church, you go shopping center, whatever. Uh, you are alive, still walking. It's God that sustains you. Young people also, uh, but old people, those who live above seventy, I want to tell you, you already live in bonus time, uh, because God promises to. Three score and ten years, and those who have lived more than seventy years old, you are already living in bonus time. Thank God, you are living in bonus time. But old people, I want to call you like God never preserve you, just for you to uh, slowly rot away. Moses, Paul, Caleb, every one of the men of God started their ministry after seventy years old. Caleb told God. Give me this mountain when he was 80 years old. Uh, you can still be of use to God. Uh, wherever you are, you can still, you are an encouragement, you are an example uh, uh, to the people uh, around you. 
So when God preserves you, He preserves you to be an example for people around you. Uh, I also realize that God kept you alive today for a purpose. I always tell people, you know, when I have this eye problem, I always tell my wife, imagine I wake up and say, who are you? Uh, I say, you just thank God I am still alive. I know how to go to the toilet myself. I still know how to do things like that. So for that reason, I thank God. God, I still uh, am able to do this. So I want to encourage you all this morning as you, as you look and realize that there is a, a God that is involved in your life and there is a purpose in everything that is happening. We don't understand. Most times we don't understand. Uh, whenever when, when we are in school, our teacher takes the cane and whacks us. Uh, most of us, while they're painful, uh, one day when I give it to you. Uh, but at the end of the day, when... When we grow up, we, we, we realize that some of us will be able to say, I thank God my teacher wrecked me. Uh, some of us, after going through the pain, we know. So it is like when we don't understand everything, uh, we learn, we live our life forward, but we learn it backward. When we learn look back, oh, yeah, it was this, uh, it was painful, yeah, but I learned something from it. There was something good in, in everything. So everything that when we go through our life, we look back. Uh, I mean, I, I always tell uh, people, I say that I got three boys. Uh, I don't give a credit card to my son if I do not know he knows how to handle. But when he knows how to handle, I, I, he can use it in my name. You know, some of us don't get all the privileges yet because you are not ready to handle what God can give you. you know? And so God will take... That's why in Corinthians he says, the mysteries of God are revealed in part. Why God reveal all his mystery in part? He doesn't reveal everything to you. I can tell you that if God tells you that he will come next year, many people will enjoy their life until next year. One month before next year, they say, sorry, you are... That's why God doesn't reveal to you. No man knows the time. I can come anytime. You know? That's the reason. Because he knows the heart of man. Uh, above all, the heart is deceitful. Amen? Okay. Shall we all stand? Let's all look to God. Father, we, we, we stand before you, we tell her, we don't understand everything. There are things that are too big for us to comprehend, Lord. But this we want to proclaim, this one we want to confess, Lord, we need you, Lord. We need you to guide us, teach us, Lord. Yes, Lord, though we don't understand everything, Lord. Although we want to take control of our life and our situations, but in as much you, you, learn, you only provide your grace every moment as we journey with you, Lord. Father, we ask, Lord, that even after, after you are releasing this word, help us to appreciate our journey with you, Lord. Help us to understand that you were involved in it. Lord. Help us to understand there is a greater plan, Lord. And Father, we, we, we thank you, Lord, that uh, we can boldly declare that we survived the onslaught. But today, Lord, we ask, Lord, that we want to survive and fulfill the destiny that you have for us, Lord. You, pre you preserved the Israelites. You took them to the, through the wilderness only for one reason, Lord, that they may enter the promised land. Lord. You journeyed with us, Lord, for so many years 
so that we we will enter the promised land now. We thank you, Lord, that uh, uh, we ask that you to forgive us for the moments that we murmur and uh, we are uh, disgruntled with certain turns of event. But we ask, Lord, that you help us, Lord. Because you told us in your word that you are the author and the finisher of our life, Lord. So we surrender our life to you, Lord, that you will help us to journey this journey and fulfill the destiny, Lord that we will be with you, Lord. Continue to use whatever we have in our life, Lord, to glorify you, Lord, to, to bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Jesus, most precious name. Amen.